Let's now take a look at some of the support ABA has received from a number of places. The American Association on Intellectual and Developmental Disabilities gave it their highest rating. They said it was highly recommended. ABA-based procedures are highly effective as the National Institute of Mental Health, the National Academic Press, the Association for Science and Autism Treatment, Autism Speaks, Organization for Autism Research. There are a number of government agencies supporting the use of ABA procedures. We have the Surgeon General of the United States, who said 30 years of research demonstrated the efficacy of applied behavioral methods in reducing inappropriate behavior and increasing communication, learning, and appropriate social behavior. We have the New York State Department of Health, the main administrators of services for children with disabilities in the U.S. Department of Defense. An article in Current Opinion in Psychiatry, interventions based on applied behavior analysis have the strongest empirical basis, although there is some evidence that all therapies have promise. Pediatrics. The most efficacious psychosocial treatment for autism is applied behavior analysis, 2005. Supreme Court of British Columbia in 2000. It is beyond debate that the appropriate treatment is ABA or early intensive behavior intervention. More recently, the National Standards Project in 2009, the largest number of studies ever reviewed, included 775 research studies. The overwhelming majority of these interventions were developed in the behavioral literature. The Autism Acceleration Act, 22 states have passed legislation that ABA has to be funded by medical insurance companies. So there's a tremendous amount of, of uh, evidence in support of, of applied behavior analysis. But here's what happens in Northern Ireland. The Department of Education, I wrote to them some years ago under the Freedom of Information Act, and I asked them to supply a list of references from research published in peer-reviewed journal articles showing an eclectic approach to be equal to or superior to ABA. They admitted they didn't have any. There aren't any. Yet, an eclectic approach is what's being promoted. This cartoon, again supplied by another parent, shows the, impl the influence that this decision has had on the parents. They're feeling abused, seriously abused. And in the South, something like 20 million euros have been spent fighting parents in the courts, denying them access to applied behavior analysis. So who is misinforming the ministers for education? I note I use the word ministers, plural. Here we have the Minister for Education in 2003. She said, all of the board's education psychologists received training in ABA techniques as part of their degree qualification. This was in response to questions that I was putting up um, with the help of some politicians. However, when you check Queen's University where these education psychologists were being trained, you find that they do not receive proper training in ABA. Minister of Education 2009, Applied Behavioural Analysis is one of many commercially available interventions for children with autism. So here we have a rather weird and unusual situation where a science has been treated as a commercially available intervention. Then we have the Task Group Report on Autism 2002. This quotation was included without any references to support it. Local professionals who work with young children suggested to task group members that they, had of great, that they would have grave reservations about being involved in subjecting such young children to such an intense behaviour program for fear of causing some kind of psychological damage. Now, if you didn't know anything about ABA and saw that in a government-sponsored report, I dare say you would be very reluctant to do anything uh, but finding out more about this science. So, how could the Surgeon General be so wrong if he's promoting this science, yet the experts in Northern Ireland uh, say that 
we should be using an eclectic approach. And incidentally, and I'll come back to this in a moment, the mistakes regarding applied behavioral analysis that are contained in that report have never been corrected in the eight years that they've been made. Here we have a response to complaint by parents regarding money spent in Middleton on this eclectic, eclectic ethos. The task group report on autism published by the Department of Education in 2002 states in relation to methods of intervention that the task group finds preference for no single approach. The group concluded that the intervention program should be child-centered rather than method-centered and should address the observed and unique needs of the, of the child. And that's rather interesting because it's based on a document that has severe uh, mistakes in reference to its understanding of applied behavior analysis, and yet these mistakes are not being corrected, have never been corrected, and the same mistakes keep uh, being thrown up by successive education ministers. Let me remind you about that book produced with Pete Parents. The book was never cited in the Northern Ireland Task Group report on autism, even though copies were sent to the group during its deliberations. Not only that, but parents from Pete were not consulted on the contents of the report, and professionals trained in behavioural analysis were not invited to respond to the material written on their science. Despite letters of protest about the misrepresentation of the science, the material has never been corrected. It has still never been corrected, despite the fact that a comprehensive review by Pete on the misrepresentation has been in circulation for some time and was sent directly to the Department of Education. Copies can be downloaded from the Pete website. That's www.peatni.org. Now, when misrepresentation exists, one could be forgiven for believing that it was all just misunderstanding. Pete's response was to organise conferences with international leaders in the field of ABA. The objective was to create opportunities for learning, not just for parents, but also for professionals and government officials. However, when professionals don't engage with leaders in the field, then opportunities for learning are wasted. This is what has happened. On one occasion, for example, we even had a conference with six international leaders in the field one of whom, Gina Green, was a Mental Health Professional of the Year in the States and had received an honorary doctorate from Queen's University the day before the conference. Government officials north and south were invited but didn't turn up. Gina Green has never been approached for her views on whether education authorities have correctly rep represented ABA and she is a regular visit visitor to both parts of this country. Let's look now at an example from the Republic. An expert advisor to the Department of Education um, said that the Department of Education has got it wrong when they say there is no preferred method. And in reference to an eclectic approach, he says it has no standing in the scientific community. But one would think that when information like this is passed on that it will be checked and appropriate changes will be made if there is misrepresentation. But, surprise, surprise, none of the mistakes made in the Southern Task Group report have either been corrected either. And when we look at this notion of child-centred versus method-centred, we've already seen in this diagram that nothing could be more child-centred than the approach taken here because it is the behaviour analysts, or the behaviour analysts I should say, who within their profession have developed methodologies and procedures for dealing with the individual. This is rather different from general psychology which works with group averages. So how could the education manager be so wrong? 